Slim Radio. Even at parties, like that, there are like people that I'm not attracted to, and then they start like talking to me. And it, at first, it's like really welcoming. They're like, "Oh, cool, you're trans, or like you're non-binary, queer, super cool." But what's down there? And I was like, "Why do I need to say that to you?" Yeah. I'm not gonna uh, be in bed with you, <laughs> and as long as I'm not gonna be in bed with you, it doesn't matter for you. I think. No, you don't owe that to anyone. Yeah. It's like I don't. I don't know why people feel so compelled to like ask these questions yeah. and like no knowledge of like boundaries in that area. Just super fucked up. For certain people, I do. So, for like, for example, if I talk with my really close friends that uh, know me really well and are uh, um, open-minded, the same as I am, I just use like, "Hey, I'm queer," and that's all. For example, with my parents or my families, I know I tend to see that labels work for them to understand my identity. So, in that way, sometimes I do use labels. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, it's also. Uh, the same and the same a bit. Like I feel like I also <clears throat> like I use labels um, for myself to understand the fluidity of my gender identity, but also my sexual orientation. Um, but I also feel like like it really always changed for me. Like um, what I had used for me, and I realized that the reason why I sometimes use for myself like. Uh, labels for my sexual orientation because I felt like everyone always wanted me to know like yes. what are you uh, like everyone was always like oh so you're a lesbian and then I was like okay I guess I need to know yeah. <laughs> and then it always changed and I was like bisexual lesbian and then I thought okay why am I doing this like who am I um, I know for myself who I am um, and how it also develops so now I just say that I'm queer um, and I think that's for me like the was for me the most liberating process actually but just personally for me i really relate to this i feel like for just cis hats in general it's like so much easier for them to just like categorize us and kind of understand like okay so you're this so we understand your identity in these terms but yeah i, I guess now i kind of refuse like yeah. I just, I don't want to label myself anymore. I just mm -hmm. say that I'm queer. Yeah, the amount of labels I've used already, you <laughs> exactly. know? Exactly, too like, many. My, like, I'm still on my journey of, like, exploring who I am with my sexuality, but mostly with my gender identity. But I think, like, since, like, two months now, I've just been saying queer, and it just feels more it's liberating, so you know? Good. Because then I don't have to prove myself to that label, because you always see, for example, I, um, when in February or March of this year, I started using the label trans and trans women and specifically but then since a few months I've been seeing that like then I for me personally I need to live up to that label and when I use the label queer for myself personally it's just I don't care there's no limits then there are no boundaries as well you know so it's just more liberating yeah that's great yeah I agree I mean I don't like to label anything and I feel like when you label yourself you have to like why are you expected to know? Like, I don't get that. Why can I just not do what I want to do, love who I want to love and just be queer, but not like be something so that other people can understand? Like, yeah. it doesn't, yeah. yeah. I remember it's when like, life. it's even in like an example of yesterday when I told someone I was gonna be here and they were like, oh, what is it about? I said, oh, queer people in Amsterdam. They're like, oh, are you queer? I was like, yes, I'm queer. Okay, but what are you? I was like, yeah. <laughs> just told you. I'm me. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> yeah, I feel like some people see it as like a sort of op opening to just like discuss your identity and maybe just like question it. And I just, I really don't like that. And <laughs> I also feel like I had this pressure like to not be confused. 
for yeah. like a really long time. Yeah. Now I'm like, it's okay to be confused. Like I don't have anything to prove to anyone. Yeah. I, like, I've, exactly. I've heard, for example, I'm on the waiting list for Fu to start hormones. I've been there, I've been on that for more than a year and there's almost two years still to come before I even can go. But I've heard from people that I know that they specifically wear skirts and makeup when they go to those appointments because doctors, when they think you are doubting yourself, they will be less likely to actually give you the hormones as well, which is to me crazy. Yeah, that's fucked up. You know, there's yeah. still like, yes, you can be queer, yes, you can be trans, but there's still this um, label you need to um, be reflected to, you know, they're like, okay, but you're trans, but then you need to be feminine. You know, if you're a trans woman, you cannot be trans, uh, trans femme, and then also wear pants and let your beard grow. That's not allowed then. Like me being together with my girlfriend for like three and a half years now, and we lived in a lot of different places, like around the world, in Amsterdam, in New Zealand, in Australia, a lot of different cities, small suburbs, bigger cities. But I feel like um, I've experienced everywhere uh, similar questions of, um, yeah, so sad for people are, like asking who's the dominant one or stuff like that, obviously. But then also like being outside together, um, I sometimes feel like um, not protected when I'm outside at night and we're holding hands or when we go together to a club and we party. I would never go to like a typical straight club because I know there will, it happened so many times that guys would just um, stand next to us and watch us. Literally, mm -hmm. happened so many times. And lesbians' relationships are just like so sexualized like, yeah. all exactly. the time. Exactly, all the time. So like, yeah. I don't feel, I, like, I feel in danger somehow, but like, I feel like compared to, for instance, like what mass people or just like, or gay guys would experience, it's like, I don't feel the immediate danger. It's more people are watching, they're like sexualizing things. And it's like, it's like this sort of, I don't, it feels very uncomfortable. And it happened like a lot of times that like people would just laugh at us. Like it just like, mm -hmm. oh my God, lesbians. Yeah. Uh, which is also really strange of a reaction. Yeah. So here at least I've never felt like in actual danger, not that it couldn't happen. It could mm -hmm. definitely happen. Mm -hmm. um, but where I'm from, like I'm from France, I'm from Paris. And it's like, surprisingly, it's like really unsafe at night as a city. And there I would be really scared, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm I'm from Istanbul. Yeah, <laughs> it's like probably 15 times worse, if not. Um, but yeah, I did go to Pride there, which was a disaster. So, <laughs> yeah, and I was like 13, I think. Um, there was so much like police violence, all that stuff. My parents calling me, freaking out. Are you safe? I'm, like, I'm safe. There's gas everywhere. Just pure chaos. So just, it's really like a kind of a no go. Yeah, I try to show affection, like my my, but I notice that my boyfriend is really hesitant with showing um, affection to me in public. I don't know if that's, we haven't really talked about that, but sometimes I just notice that like holding hands, like is fine until we see, for example, a group of guys, then like, you let's go, you know, just because you don't want to, like the thing is like, we can, uh, we, we think that everyone is, you know, good, but you just don't want to become, to go into a situation that could be dangerous. So you're just cautious, I think. That's what I also have. For example, when I go out at night and then uh, after I go home and some people talk to me or ask me questions, I just always keep my voice shut because when they start talking to me, they think, oh, girl, you know, sexy. And then they start flirting with me. But as soon as they hear my voice, I always notice the change and then can be violent or scary. So I just always keep it in actually, which is, you know, not nice actually. Yeah. Oh. I feel like homophobes just have like the best gaydar. Like, for yeah. me. like it's actually crazy. Like I'll just be walking around with my street friends even. Yeah. And like, they're just like, like they clock me immediately. Yeah. It's insane. Like they'll just start yelling at me. They make it's a like, sport of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how to explain that phenomenon, but that's very interesting to me. Just, I don't.
fet, how does wait how is that word like fetish fe, fetishation fetishization, fetishization. fetishization. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i guess that's maybe also part of it i think definitely you know, like when i'm um when i'm on grinder or on tinder or anything you know dating apps um and i say i'm trans or non-binary they immediately start talking about like hey what's down there because it's a fetish for them i think that's also part of it and that's really uncomfortable even at parties like that there are like people that i'm not attracted to and then they start like talking to me and it, at first it's like really welcoming they're like oh cool you're trans or like you're non-binary queer super cool but what's down there and i was like why do i need to say that to you yeah. I'm not going to uh, uh, be in bed with you. <laughs> and as long as I'm not going to be in bed with you, it doesn't matter for you, I think. No, you don't owe that to anyone. Yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't know why people feel so compelled to like ask these questions yeah. and like no knowledge of like boundaries in that area. Just super fucked up. That everything is viewed um, still in a binary aspect, I think, for me. Even if I say I'm non-binary, so a lot of people still ask, okay, but which side are you leaning to? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Male or female? <laughs> yeah. I'm, not I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that's like, the point. <laughs> did she even listen? You yeah. know? Yeah. I think that's the biggest misconception in my life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm in a straight relationship for the past three years. And there was always the situation of me saying that I'm gay or like queer or whatever. And people being like, yeah, but no, you're straight. And I'm like, no, like you can't decide for me who I am, and I am who I am. Like, yeah, but you're in a straight relationship, like you are straight. And like, you can't decide that. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, what that's a friend, the, a friend yeah. of mine has said. Like, by erasure, it's really big. That, for example, she was in a relationship with a girl, and as soon as. She, um, she went to another relationship with the guy. Her mom was like, see, you're straight. And this was just a phase. And it's like, it's so frustrating for her. It's insane. Yeah, I think people also, they uh, just assume like what they see and then they don't, they only know the binaries as well. So then they don't think outside of that. And I always hate when people say like, um, that I'm lesbian, they just, even if I would identify as lesbian, how can you just pres- like I get really angry when people just assume like my sexual orientation or um, also like right now I'm really questioning my gender identity and more thinking of like non-binary and it's kind of hard when everyone always uh, wants to force the binary on you yeah. as well. And I think that's the the most common misconception that I also get that um, people don't understand the gender fluidity that I have and also that I identify as queer <laughs> and not lesbian just because I'm together in a relationship with a girl. So I think also for everyone, <laughs> stop like assuming. Yeah, I think that's uh, that can really cause uh, frustration and yeah. anxiety. And every time when I ask them why they're doing that, they do not have a clear answer for it. Every time when I'm at a party and like they they always start to send us, so are you yeah. tra-? I'm like, you can say whatever you want to say, but like, I was after that, I'm asking like, okay, but why did you need to know, you know? Or why were you assuming things and they never have an answer for it? Yeah. Maybe they're just bored or something, yeah. or just no, no, nosy, nosy, yeah, nosy. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like also when you're like visibly queer, people see that as like an invitation to yeah. just ask all their questions mm. it's like i am just trying to yes. enjoy my night and <laughs> even <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and even even gay people uh like i've had a lot of gay people come up to me they're like okay so you are something else than gay okay so i have this list of questions and i need answers and i do not have the energy to go on google for 10 minutes and do my own research but i have this uh library in front of me so let yeah. me ask them <laughs> like, I will, I will be happy to go into conversation, but I won't go into an interview. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I remember as well um, being asked like 20 times for interviews for people that are doing, for example, creative business. You know, they uh, every first year has this uh, project in the first year that they need to interview someone from a minority. They always go ask me, and then, and then the questions I get 
are so simple and like I'm like you could have done your research and create a conversation with me but that's not it they're just wanting want want the answers as an interview which I then I stopped doing that as well because then you don't really go into a deeper layer of talking about queerness and gender they're just talking about do you feel unsafe yes no okay I don't actually need to know why I don't need to know how we can improve it I just need to know no So if someone is wanting to come to Amsterdam, I say defo do. Because it is a nice city. I'm like in love with the city and there are a lot of open-minded people. You can really find your community here. And I think yeah. that is the best part about Amsterdam, that they have these communities that are so extremely open-minded that you can you know, be whoever you want to be. And that really helped me as well, my journey. Uh, in like finding that community for me personally so yeah, I would say defo yeah go yeah I think like the community is super important and also like for me it was like um, the queer events that were here as well so like being able to go on like queer film festivals and I think for me it was like a big part like scene representation um, to uh, ask myself also questions that I wouldn't dare to ask myself in other places where I felt like Maybe there's not a support system. Maybe there's not a community that I can talk to whenever I ask myself these questions. I wouldn't even allow myself doing that in other places sometimes. So um, I think it's really important for queer people also to um, also if you may be living in Amsterdam, but also not living in Amsterdam to have that um, like try to find that uh, support system around you because then then just everything gets fun <laughs> as well and easier. Yeah. So I always, whenever I think of now where I would want to move to as well, I look up like which community, where's what is like the LGBTQ plus community there, which events are there, and uh, if there would be nothing, I would be like, no, <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing this. Yeah. I think it's a bit dangerous for me. I uh, it's a bit dangerous sometimes because, for example, when uh, I have this yeah just example when someone cat calls me and I always used to fire back and be like fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, one time I had a guy who was running after me when I said that. So since this happened, I'm always like, hmm. yeah, is this actually going to change something? That's or the thing, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think like if I, if I you won't make a it. change. I think like just prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. I always say to myself, like I don't have to talk to them uh, or like fire back. Be me being myself and ignoring them and celebrating myself is for me enough to prove them wrong. I know? think that's a good yeah attitude. I usually say fuck off, but then start running. <laughs> Um, I, I used to like freeze because like I would get catcalled so much when I was younger especially like I lived in a big city and everything and like probably from the age of like 13 I would get catcalled like constantly and so I would just like not say anything not do anything and I feel like recently I don't know I've just like developed like better like responses and now I just feel the urge to just like say something <laughs> I can't help it because I feel like okay this is my moment what, but it's dangerous what do you say then it depends. I don't know. Last time it was this guy who was like, I, w I was wearing a skirt and he was like, oh, nice legs. And I just like turned around and said, that's fucking creepy, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, him and his friends were kind of just. Oh, wow. Okay. But you never know how people are going to react. So it's definitely not something to yeah. recommend. I think it just, depends, it's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I always like, I'm always like, I just don't say anything because that's the same thing as I said earlier. Like, for example, if a guy is get calling me, most of the times, like 95% of the times, they're kept calling me thinking, you know, I am biologically a woman. So then I'm like, if I will say something back to this group of guys in the middle of the night yeah. with this voice, I don't know if I'm going to be safe. So I'll just That's the be like, thank too. you. I know I have long legs. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then strut my pavement and go. Yeah. yeah. At night, like absolute, absolutely mm -hmm. not. Never. Mm -hmm. 
especially when there's no one around. Because here it's like it happens really often that you're just alone in the yeah. street at night. Yeah. So like no, <laughs> I don't want to die. Yeah, those side streets. But I think what I always do whenever I'm out, when I go partying, and there's like a, a guy cat calling me, I always let them get kicked out. Smart. <laughs> I go to the and normally it works like i go to the bartender and i'm like hey this guy's problematic please kick them out and it's so much fun that's really good <laughs> it's yeah. so nice yeah one time i had a guy he was following me and it was so funny there was like police officers standing over there and i was like i'm just gonna walk to the police officer <laughs> and he was like cat calling me following me and we were like together walking to the police officer <laughs> and i was like here you go <laughs> pretty convenient yeah <laughs> 